Hey, hope you're doing well. I certainly am. I have been uh, working my ass off lately on uh, the garage. Some of you have seen it, but most of you haven't because, you know, it's not within the camera niche. I upload a couple of videos here on the YouTube channel and they don't get that many views. But if you're interested in DIY stuff, you should definitely head over and check it out because it's been a big project. And for those of you that are waiting to see how the new studio is going to turn out, you're going to have to wait approximately a month longer. I am having some big plans for it. It's going to look very, very good if everything falls into place just with how I want it to look. And I'm also starting up a podcast. It's going to be over here. So I'm redoing this part of the studio as well, which is going to be sick. I'm looking forward to everything that is to come this year so much. And I'm working my ass off to make it happen. I'm also working on a couple of things outside of YouTube and outside of the studio building process that is, you know, generating a revenue long term for my business as well, which is very important because this entire YouTube thing is very fluctuating. So it comes and goes. There's a lot of, you know, if I hustle down and make these kind of videos, then I make a lot of money over here, but then I lose a lot of time with my family. And for the last five years, I have been sacrificing a lot of time with my family. And it has generated in something good, which is now, because now I can spend more time with my family and don't have to worry about all the other things that I had to worry about back then. For example, you know, the economical stress that I had back then and not having a job, all those things. Now I'm in a much better position. So sacrifice brings victory. No sacrifice, no victory. Words from the famous Optimus Prime. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, starting YouTube and what kind of cameras that you should invest in and the entire, you know, thing that being a creator is. Because I see so many people that are held back by their own limits of knowing what kind of camera that they need. So let's let's just start with this one. This Sony FX6. This is a $7,000 camera, like $8,000 camera, I think, without a lens. That's like, it's a great camera, but it's a very specific camera for specific needs and not something that I use on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm making my YouTube videos. This is something that I bought to be able to fly on my drone specifically. And I made that for the sake of making a YouTube video, but I've also always wanted to have a camera like this. Have I felt that I've used this camera enough to justify the price? Honestly, no. I think that what this camera is, is a very good production camera. I'm a YouTuber. I don't make bigger productions as often as I would like to, when I'm owning a camera like this. So is it worth investing in an FX6 if you're just, you know, running a YouTube channel? Eh, I wouldn't say so. I, I would probably go for something else. And over here, we got the Sony A1. This is also incredibly, incredibly overkill for someone that is just doing YouTube videos such as me, but it's also a very good all round camera and very good photography camera. And this is not a camera that I am, you know, regretting that I got because it has served me so well and it still does when it comes to the photography side and having a backup camera in my kit is something that I highly recommend for a lot of people that are, you know, serious with their photography business. These cameras and this entire system, system setup that I got here in the studio is something that I have accumulated over the course of several years from the time that I've been working as a filmmaker, videographer, content creator, whatever you want to call it. If you're starting out right now and you're looking at YouTube, you can feel a little bit overwhelmed. Even at my channel, you know, when you're looking at the latest, greatest couple of uh, wireless microphones or latest lenses or latest cameras that are just released, it feels like you have to buy the absolute latest. Otherwise, you're just going to be, you know, missing out on the good stuff that is supposed to come in the next version or something like that. I know that I had that feeling when I was starting out YouTube, 
way back 2017. I even started my channel, I think it was 2016, with one of those small action cameras. And that was cool because I started to document the process and I actually learned how to edit my videos by using that tiny camera. Thinking about YouTube, you usually think about these well-produced, high-end videos, great image quality, fantastic sound, a lot of B-roll thrown into the video. And I get it, that looks great, but it's a very high standard that you set for yourself if that is where you want to start. One of the biggest things, and one of the things that a lot of people miss out when it comes to making YouTube videos is the fact that you need to practice sitting in front of the camera talking to the camera just as, as if you were talking to a friend of yours or a you know someone some acquaintance that is listening to you blabbering on about the favorite thing that you like to talk about when you're practicing and making videos in front of the camera you practice something that i think is very important that is you know be, being a public speaker if you may it's not really the same thing as standing on a big stage with 500,000 people or you know 50 people even or 25 even but it does give you the confidence in a different way than if you don't practice and i think that when it comes to youtube one of the things that i like the most when i watch youtube videos is the the feeling that i feel through the lens so if you're watching this right now and you feel like wow really like this dude peter here then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and maybe subscribe if you want to see me again. But you know, that that is the kind of vibe that I want to have with YouTube Earth that I'm watching. And I, I don't really think that the camera matters as much because I don't really care which kind of camera that the video is shot with, as long as it's looking decent and the audio is good and the person that is in front of the camera conveys their message in a good way. That for me is something that is very important when it comes to YouTube. And the reason that I want to bring this up is because I have been taking a little bit of a break from making YouTube videos since I've been working on the garage and trying to focus on, you know, finishing up the house and running my business, making sure that I'm moving into the next phase of that, starting a new company and so on and so forth. There's a lot of things going on uh, on the side of it but I feel that when you don't make something for quite some time you start to forget how it is to actually do the thing that you're good at even though when I'm sitting down now recording the video I feel like I'm I'm actually kind of good at doing this but I'm also reverting back to the cheapest camera that I have in my kit which is the Zony ZV-E1 now it's still a very expensive camera but it's also the cheapest camera that I got in my kit for the things that I do, and I use it 99% of the time. So if you're you know, moving into the starting phases of your career, or you wanna do a YouTube channel, you wanna create something, then like you don't have to buy the latest and greatest. 4K is gonna be good for a very long time moving forward. And the same thing goes for 10-bit S-Log3. Like, I, don't, I don't even know everything right now because I've sort of like zoned out from reading all the specs on all the new cameras. The kind of testing that I want to do moving forward into the future when it comes to products is to just take you along on, you know, how is this new camera working if you were to shoot something like this? And is this thing going to be fun to use in a scenario like this? Like that is the kind of thing that I want to make. That is the kind of videos that I want to make moving forward. And I kind of feel that I don't really want to make, you know, the reviews of the latest and greatest lens and the latest and greatest gimbal or whatever it might be. I just want to make fun videos. I, I want to make the kind of videos that are not bashing on someone else's gear because we are all different. Just because I'm using the Sony CV-1 doesn't mean that you should use the Sony CV-1. Maybe you're going to be well off with just a GoPro. Where do I have my GoPros? And someone might be freaking amazing with a gimbal while someone else is going to be freaking amazing just handheld and never use a gimbal. Like we all have different kind of tastes and ways that we capture stuff and nothing is wrong with that. Me personally though, 
I'm a Sony fanboy, mainly because the cameras do what I want them to do whenever I'm using them. And I think that their cameras are just so easy to use. But just to give you a quick roundup, uh, I want to bring back a story from when I started out and everything that has sort of led up to this point. And it was when I bought my first Sony camera uh, because I borrowed a camera from a friend. So I borrowed a Nikon D300S for a while and bought some lenses for that. But then I wanted to move into videography and I realized that that camera wasn't, you know, doing the things that I wanted to do. So I went for a Sony A6400 instead. And that camera was freaking amazing. I still think that if you're having sort of like a studio setup like this, you could easily go for a camera like that and have it in your studio setup. And looking back at it, I probably should have used that camera for a little bit longer. But one thing that I did in the beginning of 2018 was that I purchased a Sony a7R II because I thought that that was going to make me a better photographer and videographer. That was not the case. Something that I realized that I needed was practice. The more I practice, the more I started to realize that it doesn't really matter which kind of camera that I have at my disposal, as long as I have a camera that can do the things that I want it to do. And I know how to do those things with this camera. So the more I practice, the more I realize that, okay, I'm just going to have to go back way back to the beginning of everything and just start out from scratch, learn the ISO aperture and shutter, the triangle of life and white balance and whatever it might be as a photographer that you need to learn. But the more I practiced this, the more I got to practice editing because I took all those clips and then just moved into the editing process and so on and so forth. And there's, there's just been so much growth coming from going out and practice. And I think that that is the key. If you want to start a YouTube channel today and you, you're looking into the best camera or you're looking into the best video that you want to make, then make the things that you're thinking about making. And if you think you are going to be better with a better camera, you're not. You're just going to be able to make different things because you have a camera that can do different things. But you also have to know how to do those things in order to utilize the camera and create those different things. I really hope that you got something out from this video. Uh, I will be back shortly with a couple of new stuff uh, that is going to be a lot of fun. But if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and uh, like it as well. There's like thumbs up like a I'd love that. Okay. Peter from Sweden saying goodbye. How do you get that now? So I'm saying we have to buy. I don't.